that a man could not have been the author of the Quran. Now someone can say, wait a second, wait a second, hold on. Look, this statement of the Big Bang you're talking about mentioned in the Quran cannot be used as evidence because it was already used in Aristotle's book. Therefore, what the Quran simply did, the author of the Quran simply did, he just copied from Aristotle's work. But there is a very, very big problem with this type of argument, which is, how did the author of the Quran know to select this, this explanation versus the several wrong ideas of how the universe was created which existed at that time, right? We all know that if you read the books of history, whether it's the Hindu scriptures, Bible, whatever, there's several wrong and incorrect understanding of how the universe was created. How did the author of the Quran know to select this particular uh, concept? That's the first question. How are we able to detect truth in an ocean of falsehood and myths? How do you know this was the right one? Therefore, my conclusion on this is that, that the argument that the Quran was just a copy job from previous books because of the fact that it mentions scientific information that is all present, that, that was also present in those earlier books, that argument does not work. Because logic dictates to us that we better find five times as many clear scientific errors. Right? Let me give you an example. You see, when I was in high school, I never studied. In fact, what I would do, I would copy from my neighbor when it came on test day. But you know what happened? My neighbor didn't study either, so I wound up flunking. What basically happened was that, yes, I did copy some correct answers off his page, but I also copied some wrong answers from his page, and I also incorporated that on my test exam. Therefore, I flunked. Likewise, doing a copy job in the year 600 AD is an even more dangerous job. It's literally a recipe for disaster because the books available to the author of the Quran are filled with myths and legend and are filled with scientific errors and blunders. In fact, there are much more scientific errors and blunders than there are any true statements by at least a thousand times. And therefore, uh, my conclusion is, on this point, is that when we see a scientifically correct statement in the Quran, whether it was already mentioned in other books or, or whether if it was not, that does not matter. Because what matters is how did the author of the Quran know this was the correct answer in an ocean of falsehood and myths. So that is another illogical argument used against the Quran, or any book for that matter. Now let me talk about the last part. If you, if you study the Quran, you will see that the Quran does not contradict any established modern scientific fact. This is, this is a true statement. That's really not what's going to be deba debated tonight, but I just wanted to bring up that point. Anyways, many have uh, tried to uh, try to find scientific errors in the Quran, but they have failed. But my point is this here. Scientific errors really are not germane to the topic tonight. They're really irrelevant. Let me explain to you why. Let's hypothetically say again that uh, there was this book we found, an ancient book 2,000 years ago, okay? I'm just, I'm just giving you a you know, hypothetical. And in that book, you found every single uh, concept of modern day chemistry in that book that we, you know, scientists have only discovered today. I don't think anyone would hesitate in concluding that man could not have been the author of this book. Nobody would hesitate on that conclusion. Now let me, now let me throw, throw this in this equation also. What if there were two pages filled with scientific errors also in that book? What does that mean? Does it change the fact that there are statements in that book which a human being could not have known 2,000 years ago? Of course not. It doesn't change that fact. So again, I'm talking logically here. Logically, scientific errors are all irrelevant. Whether a book contains scientific errors or not is really irrelevant. It does not prove or disprove anything. These are all emotional arguments. They're basically used to 